vessels mount up. What appears to be an upright, amazing citizen to everyone else is indeed a well-known perp and slanderer by you. We all have those people in our environment, in our neighborhood, that seem to pay a little bit more attention to you than everybody else. And they're watching you leave, watching you come, watching you out in your yard, watching you live your life through their blinds, while they're watering the grass, while they're going to get their mail. They try to make it seem like they're just doing regular everyday activities, but they're really keeping you under a, a certain level of surveillance. It feels like this person is, is spying on you and they're always doing something to be able to keep an eye on you. Whether they're outside smoking a cigarette or taking their trash or getting some fresh air or walking their dog, it will be in close proximity to you or around the time you do something or it will be so they can watch you close, up close, figure out your routine, try and figure out what you're doing for the day, what your plans are. And these people will actually mock you. They'll mock you by doing similar things to yourself. You may have on a certain color. They'll walk outside and be wearing that same color. And how they do this, I'm still figuring it out. Sometimes people have cameras set up at specific areas. Maybe you, like when people get dressed, try avoid looking out the door or try avoid looking out the window until you're actually ready. If you don't want this person to be petty and, and play these little mimic mimic uh, type games with you, try not to go outside until you're ready because what I've noticed is that when you stay around people who are watching you more than they should, one thing they'll do is they'll dress like you and copy you and try to pretty much do something similar to you like you take your trash out at, at a specific time they'll take their trash out at a specific time and sometimes these people do this and they actually have hopes that you'll speak to them all right you probably have noticed that this person has like some weird strange ways about them and you probably noticed that their behavior is quite stalkish so you chose to keep your distance and avoid this person so now you don't want anything to do with this person. They live in the same area as you. Maybe they talk to everyone. Maybe they're known as a friendly person. A lot of these types of people, they take it uh, offensive. They take it to offense and take it offensively that will take to offense that you don't want to have a conversation with them or talk to them or deal with them. And they will constantly try to make a situation for you and them to interact. So once this person sees that you don't want too much to do with them or you don't want to interact with them the way they want to, this person will start to act different. But it's, it's only common sense because you can see that this person has a stalkish, narcissistic type, sociopathic type psychopathic type spirit on them because it's like that's the only reason why someone would follow someone around or be able to take that much interest in them versus being interested in themselves most people are 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 too into themselves to be able to display this type of behavior so it's like once you see it you pretty much know like okay this is one of those types of neighbors that I need to avoid and that I need to keep my distance from because I, I could sense that this person is a little bit more interested in me than they should be. And this person is going to watch me very closely. This person is going to watch me like a hawk. All right. There were situations where 
it's like you'll pull out your drive you'll, you'll pull out your driveway to go somewhere and they'll either follow you where you're going or they know your routine so they know where you're going like the worst thing is is when somebody knows where you're going and they're able to follow your routine it's like say you're going to the grocery store your neighbor your neighbor walks outside same time as you they get in their car they see you get in their car they might hurry up and get in their car or they know what time you do it so they might walk outside almost the same time as you because they're watching your routine so it's not that they have a camera in your home even though that's the the vibe that they create and someone like you that may think that may overthink that may be analytical you may tend to think do they have a camera in my home in some instances these people do set up cameras in people's homes because they vandalize they break into people's property and depending on how much of a freak or a creep this person is, they may actually try to set up cameras. You know, there have been reports where these people do that. They actually have cameras either aimed at your driveway or aimed at your house. And with neighbors, most likely that's it. Like if, if you haven't done anything to piss anyone off or if you're not telling like on anyone or like not telling but exposing anyone or exposing any truth on any organization like even if you are exposing like certain truths, if it's not like on a government level where it's like you're trying to bring down a, a public figure or a politician or something like that, you probably don't have to worry about people putting cameras in your home. You may not be that important. You know, I know a lot of females like females ha have to deal with that. And the person the person might be and who knows what the person's into. So usually if somebody puts cameras in your home, it's probably like unfortunately it's probably you know, uh, freaky related is probably sex related. You know, it's a lot of freaks out there. And in today's world that we live in cameras and recording people like that's, that's big business for like freaks. So, you know, that might be a reason why someone might try to do that, but usually people either just are watching you so close. And I, I, I only said that to try to alleviate some people's paranoia or some people's fear because, you know, they'll have you think for the longest time. I thought people actually had cameras in my room, but what they do is they just watch you so damn much and they watch you way too much. So it's not that they have cameras in your room. If you're at a hotel or if you're at a, a motel or if you're in a room, if you're renting a room, if you are um, have an apartment, there's cameras all around there. So um, like people will set up groups and they'll watch the cameras and unfortunately, due to text messaging and phones, I believe that people have networks set up against certain people that they do stalk and they harass. Somebody may work at the place you stay. They may be an owner. They may be a landlord or they may just be like a property manager or someone just watching the property for the owner. All right. And they may have something against you because you look better than them. Maybe the girl in apartment 4B looks like looks like she's attracted to you all right maybe um you offset the balance of power because everybody liked them before you got there and thought they were the s-h-i-t but now you're the new cool person in, in, in town or you're the the new this or the new that or you know maybe they they're jealous of you for some type of reason so what they'll do is people will band together against you and they'll have their little cliques, their little groups. Cause it's like when you walk to a certain place and it's just groups of people standing there and they're just all looking at you, that's not good. That's not positive. So, you know, they're either talking about you or conspiring or trying to come up with a plan to try to either get you to leave, get you to move. And that's what most of the harassment is about. A lot of people feel that you're stepping on their toes and they want you out of there because it's like they feel they can't breathe or be themselves because they're too insecure. And if anybody's ever dealt with insecurity, it's like a feeling where you feel like you want to get out of your own skin or run away from yourself. It takes a real person a real man or a real woman to be able to deal with their insecurities because it makes you feel like you want to escape the type of person that you are 
and you know go find a way to be perfect so that way you're 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 not going to feel the pain of being imperfect but that pain of feeling imperfect that's where a lot of growth lies and that's where a lot of that's where a lot of growth can happen for a person's mind their identity about themselves the way they feel about themselves but the type of spirit that these people have on them it's the spirit of a program so it's like these these people are by default kind of like programmed to behave this way because of the type of spirit that they have because the type of spirit that they have is trapped within this program and it, it it's it's like kind of ran by this program and help helps run the program so you know that's why they are in the matrix and that's why they operate like they are possessed because they actually are overtaken by like a spirit so you'll notice that people you'll notice that they'll behave similarly in the same way it's because they're all governed by that same spirit all right so and it like i said it, it, it they'll do it to try to get you to leave they'll do it to try to intimidate you to try to get you to go somewhere else it's just a tactic to try and run you off and scare you away because I, who 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 wants to keep dealing with that they know sooner or later somebody's either going to give them a reaction freak out or the person's just going to leave and hightail it and just get on out of there because they know that they're either going to get the the vibe that they don't belong there's nothing there for them these people are 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 bat turd crazy and that's not just the way i want to live my life when i walk outside and you know walk out into my environment i just don't want to be harassed like that so they know people are either going to like get into some type of argument or some type of fight and a lot of people that are unaware of how to handle this and what what's actually going on they end up reacting and getting into physical altercations with these people and you know it's like that could end up bad for a person even if you know that like that that could just end up bad because most likely they have some type of ties to law enforcement especially if they're working with the people who own the place so like you have to be careful like if the person's already cool with the people who own the place most likely they're going to be cool with law enforcement because if the person is cool with the person who owns the place the person who owns the place by default is cool with law enforcement because if any problems occur or if any trouble happens or if anybody comes and tries to you know harm anyone or, or cause any damage shoot up the place uh, uh stab someone or something like that god forbid people are the like the person who's in charge of the property is going to call the police all right so the, the person who owns the property is definitely cool with the police and by default the person who owns the property is going to be cool with the person that's doing the, the stalking or the harassment if they both have something against you if you sense um if you sense evil coming from the the property manager and you sense the same energy coming off the people that stay there they're most likely quote unquote in bed with each other and they probably are actually really in bed with each other all right and a lot of people are threatened by the presence of someone that doesn't behave the same way that they do because they sense the realness they, they sense the authenticity they sense that real woman spirit or whether you're a man they sense that real masculine spirit all right so you know um people are threatened by once people compromise their ways or they compromise themselves or they turn over a new leaf and get into some activities they probably you know shouldn't have any business getting involved in and it's like uh you know they're trying to hide it they don't want anything to know once they get around other people who don't behave like that it's like they get threatened because it's like they know this person is not compromising themselves they know this person is not bending over as cat williams would say literatively and figuratively in some cases but you know like a, a lot of these people are into some some you know they're they're that they, they, they they're like real cool with each other a little too cool but um like that's why this person is a perp like that's why this person is a known perp and like known perps they they all tend to know each other they all tend to click up they all tend to be cool with one another and because you don't want anything to do with them 
like I said, they start to feel insecure. And, and, and like a, and the best way to describe the way insecurities make you feel is like wanting to get out of yourself and go find the perfect version of yourself just so you can feel comfortable in certain situations. But you have to work on your mind and elevate it to a level to where you have to accept yourself and realize that things aren't always perfect. There's always going to be someone better than you. And if there's anything you don't like about yourself, is you're going to have to fix it and it's going to take time to fix it. But when you get around other people who are either doing better or who are feeling better or, you know, have something that you want, it's something that you have to work on within your mind to continue to have peace and, and, and not be jealous or not feel salty or not something just bit me or, or, or not, you know, not, uh, remain in your insecurities. Like you could, you could outgrow these things. But like I said, the spirit on them, there's no growth. That's why they behave the way they do. And it's like, you'll notice that these people will stay the same for years. It's because that spirit that they're governed by is the one that operates this whole program. And the spirit that governs them that operates this program has been the same spirit since the dawn of man. All right. It's the same spirit that uh, was in Joseph's brothers when they put him in that ditch. It's the same spirit that was in King Herod when they were coming after uh, Mary's baby, Christ, Jesus. All right. So it's the, it's the same spirit that's been running this program forever. That program that the, the spirit ran by this program is not going to change. And the people who are in, in the program who are also governed by that spirit until they become aware of a certain, uh, uh, until they become aware of God, they're they're like going to be governed by that spirit, that spirit that is overrunning this program. They're going to be overran by that spirit. All right, so that's why you always know of a fruit by the tree it bears. You could tell by these people's behavior and their actions that they don't have God in their life, and if they do, they're lying and they're fork tongued and they're just using God as a way to manipulate other people into disguise into being able to keep their true self hidden and disguise their true motives against others. All right, so what appears to be an upright, amazing citizen to everyone else is indeed a well known perp and slanderer by you. This person has turned other people against you because. You don't like them, and you can sense they have a stalker, a stalker, stalkish type spirit on them. They they give you the vibes of a person that is a little too interested. So, because you can actually see through this person and see the spirit on them and read them like a book, you know to not deal with them too too close, too heavy. You know not to get too personal with this this individual. So the fact that you're able to see that they don't like when you can see right through them. It's like they feel their cover is blown. And now that you can see through them and that their cover is blown, they have to try to make you out to be a liar. Because if people will believe you and if people will think that you're a good person and you don't talk to so-and-so or you don't deal with this perpetrator, you don't deal with this neighbor, this certain individual, this coworker, now they're going to go out and slander your name and try to get people to believe that you're a bad person or whatever lie that they feel would suit you best to tell them. All right, it may be something that you look like you might do or something that you look like you might be associated with or or something that, you know, you may have had an issue with in the past and they try to bring it up and try to continue to peg you as that, but it's like you're you're a totally different person now. But this person had to find some dirt on you and that's why they'll try and watch you. That's why they'll study you. That's why they'll watch you so closely and heavily is because they want to find some dirt on you. They want to see what you do wrong, what kind of mistakes you make. They want to see how they could try to peg you as a bad person. So that way they can have things to say and to tell to other people to get them to think such things are true about you. All right. The fact that you are a dangerous person. All right. This like the one thing that they'll they'll do. Is like if you stay to yourself and you don't talk to anyone, it's like they'll try to peg you off as a killer or something like that. But it's weird. I've worked at places where people purposely did things to make me not like them. So when I use my logical mind and I'm dealing with the stress of people who are doing things purposely to make me not like them and you have to be around other people. You know, people can get the idea that you're not a good person. And what people will do is people will see that you're not dealing with them. And if you're a good person, 
people will automatically assume, oh, okay, this, he's not dealing with them because it must be something up with this person. This, this person may have something wrong with them, but nobody wants to feel like there's anything wrong with them, especially people who try to give off the idea that they're perfect. All right, it's a bruise to someone's ego who thinks so highly of themselves and that they're perfect for someone to not like them, especially if this person feels that you're weaker or you owe them admiration, you owe them acknowledgement, you owe them respect. All right, they have the idea that they have ownership over you and how you act and how you uh, energetically involve yourself with them. They feel that they have ownership over you. All right, so... You're dealing with someone that's pretty much psychotic and someone that thinks that they should always get their way and someone that thinks that everyone should just treat them and behave towards them the way that they want. And not everyone is going to do that. People are going to behave towards you and treat you the way you, you they want. That's why it's so many people that we stay away from because we don't try to change other people. You want to act that way towards me? Fine. You want to behave that way towards me? Cool. I'm not going to try to change you. What I will do is change who I put my, myself around, who I choose to, to use my time with. That's what I'll change. All right. But because they know that you value yourself and your value systems aren't in alignment with theirs and you're not the same kind of person as them. That's why you don't want anything to do with them. You can see straight through them and you see they have uh, you see they have a stalkish type of spirit on them. So it's like, you know what? I don't want to be involved with that. This person is going to end up turning into an energy vampire because if you don't like people and they know you don't like them and they still put themselves in, vic in your vicinity or still try to approach you or still try to talk to you or try to come near you so that way you have to experience their energy or pay any type of attention to them, that person is by default an energy vampire. All right? They're trying to basically psychically, ener uh, energetically interact with you to affect your energy to you know bring your vibration down. And that's why people who don't who you don't even like when they come around, it affects your mood. But you have to work on that. And you, you, you can change that. You just have to work on your thoughts when that person comes around. So that way you're not brought down by their energy. Because when certain people come around, and this is why it's witchcraft and this is why it's, it's, it's black magic. Because they do enough things to you to where when they come around, all they have to do is put themselves in your vicinity. And then you're going to bring yourself down with your own thoughts. And this is why I'm always saying let go of hate, let go of resentment, have love for people who don't hate them love those that hate you because it, with our own thoughts we control how we feel so they use black magic with doing a lot of nefarious acts to us to get us upset to bother us to be a pest to us so that way when they get around us our face gets all twisted up our energies brought down we're not our positive happy loving vibrant selves and these people are able to control and manipulate us just with their presence alone so your thoughts really have to be on point as far as dealing with these kinds of suckers because they'll suck you in because they're energy vampires. So you have to control your mind in such a way to where you're not affected by their stupidity. All right, because they'll they'll be petty, they'll be stupid, they'll do things that they shouldn't do to people, but it'll be covert and, and uneasy, uneasily a uneasily able to detect. All right. So that's why what appears to be an up right amazing citizen to everyone else is indeed a well-known perp it's like that movie with shia labeouf when their neighbor was trying to um defend his image and try not to look like he was a whole serial killer when he was all right so basically because you know shia labeouf obviously didn't like serial killers this guy slandered him he played it cool he, t he told the police uh the opposite gaslit him and now everybody's thinking that he's crazy so they'll have people thinking that you're crazy when they're the ones watching you plotting on you paying too much attention to you copying you doing things to create interactions with you when you want absolutely nothing to do with them it's like you would pretty much have to off this person 
in order to get them to stop. And that's that's really what they do. They pretty much do a type of behavior to where you can't make them stop unless you were to take them off this world. I mean, take them out this world, take them off this earth. All right. So and and that's the thing. They want you to want to hurt them. They want you to want to to kill them. They want you to want to have all these negative feelings towards them and anger towards them. All right. So and when you when you feel like you want to harm them or hurt them and you have a level of hatred or negativity towards them and you're thinking about them, that energy that like that's creating an energy link between you and them. And they're able to attack you uh, psychically, spiritually through um, with, with spiritual warfare, because if you have a type of feeling towards them and it's not good, that's the only way that um, you could be linked up to be hurt or harmed by their attacks. So if random things seem to be happening, if things seem to not be working out, if see, if things seem to be giving you some trouble, you might have to let go of some resentment towards some people because if you know that person is possibly practicing witchcraft or spells or black magic on you, your anger and resentment and hate towards them is going to create a bridge between you and them for those energies to flow. In order for them to be able to send dark magic and, and, and uh, arrows of fire at you, you have to have some type of hatred or negativity or resentment or want them to be hurt or harmed in some kind of way. So that's why it's good to let go and just let God take over all of that, because when, when the devil will use them against you for you to harm yourself with your own thoughts. So that's why what appears to be an upright, amazing citizen to everyone else is indeed a well-known perpetrator and slanderer by you, because you can see the spirit that's on this person. And they'll possibly end up getting you caught up in trying to prove that that person is not a good person. But by then, this person is able to manipulate it and able to tell everyone and everything that it's you, especially if you're a person that stays to themselves, if you don't talk to other people. All right. A lot of these people end up backing good, introverted, quiet people, even extroverted people or introvert, extrovert, extrovert, introvert, whatever you are. They just end up taking good people and backing them in a corner and making them stay to themselves and not want to deal with anyone out in society. So once they get you as this person who stays to themselves that doesn't like people that's become a hermit, then it, it works to their, their purpose because you're not talking to anyone. No one's getting to know you. You're looking at people. You're not wanting to anything to do with people. And now this person could possibly say, oh, they don't like anybody or they don't like us. I've had people say that about me at jobs and they're like, oh, he don't like anybody. But it's like people are purposely doing things to make you not like them. And they're only gaslighting you and playing with your mind because they know they're evil as the day is long. And they know that you're a good person with a good heart. So what they do is they play on that and they try to get you to they try to get you to think otherwise about yourself and try to trick you into thinking that it's you and you're the bad person. All right. That's why this person is a perp. And that's why this person is known to you as a slanderer, because to everybody else, they're probably, you know, they're probably all in a satanic witch, witchcraft, spell casting, uh, uh, dark art practicing cult together. All right. They're probably all in this thing together. It's a lot more evil people than it is good. That's why that's why you're, you're so close to God. And that's why you have such a good connection with God, because early on, you, you like he knew that he was going to have to protect you. And he knew that you were only going to be uh, pretty much having him on, on your side and on your team, because the world that we live in is primarily, you know, is it, it, it's, it's primarily evil, even, even though there are a lot more. There are a lot of good people, you know, and, and you know, majority of people are good and have good intentions, but there still is groups of people out there in groups, in gangs, in cults, in, in, in organizations that still hold uh, some type of grudge, some type of animosity, some type of hate towards God's children, All right, especially people who don't want to talk to them, don't want to interact with them the way they want, don't want anything to do with them. So it's only because you, you've been staying to yourself. You've been avoiding this person, ignoring this person, and you can see the type of spirit on them. So you being able to see the type of spirit on them, it's like you it's like being a kid and your brother breaks something and he tells your mom you broke it before you you you, you all even get a chance to be asked who broke it. 
So it's like they'll go and tell people you did things before you even get a chance to introduce yourself, explain yourself, uh, tell your side of the story. So it's like they will try to like set you up by being pegged as a person that doesn't like anyone. And people don't like people that think they're better than other people. You know, who knows what they're telling them? Uh, this person thinks they're better than us. This person thinks that um, uh, they're uh, a better person than we are. You know, so people don't like people like that. And that's why people will randomly give you dirty looks or randomly do things to try to mess with your mind. Like, who knows what these people are telling them? All right. And it's really none of our business to be concerned about it or worry about it. But you just know that you're closer to God than you're closer to, to, to any of these other people out here. And that's what's best for you anyways. It's best for you to be closer to God than to be closer to people who aren't friendly and who secretly have vendettas against you and who will, you know, spread lies and dirt on your name because you can see straight through them and you don't want anything to do with, with the energy that they're bringing. All right. So. You can see you can see straight through those neighbors. You're not tripping. You're not bugging those people who are behaving strangely and oddly towards you that, you know, and that you see every day and that are, are trying to um, make it appear that you're the one with the issue or problem. Don't feed into it. Eventually, it's going to end up catching up to them. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Smash the like button. Smash the share button. Peace.